Hey, folks, welcome to Food for Action. Obi Morant here. Yeah, man, coming to you live from I don't know where I am, but uh, but it's all good. Listen, today is going to be an awesome show. Um, we're going to talk about a few things. I'm going to mention a couple things real quick before we get um, get uh, DJ Fritzo on here. Um, one, I have to go over and go over the uh, the mission statement again. I do this as a business does. And I came up with a mission statement because I believe it's very important uh, for people who who enter the platform, who join the conversation, uh, to understand really why I do this and not that it's just some show. I'm not here just to show my face. I don't need to do that no more. I did plenty of that in the 90s. Uh, so, so it literally is a, is, is a platform that has a mission to it. And the statement is as this. Uh, I and we acknowledge, express the racial divide, racism, oppression, exploitation, violence, systemic racism against black men, black women, and black youth in the United States and all over the world. We, I and we, will proactively help create a path to a true United State in America. And I believe that through this conversation, I see you, bro. <laughs> and I believe through this conversation, we're going to achieve that. We're going to achieve thought. We're going to achieve thought-provoking things that we'll all process individually and then continue engaging in conversation. And then we go on and move to the next level where we begin to put that into some form of action, hence the name Food for Action. All right. So um, first, I want to make sure that I clear. Did I say this? Number one, vote, 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 vote with a mission, vote with a purpose, um, vote with expectation. Now, we'll get into more of that later on. Um, I'm not going to hesitate anymore. I am, we are going to go live on Instagram now too via modern technology because I'm doing it right, yeah. And uh, and um, we're going to bring in my friend, my brother, my cuz, um, his family and my family go way, 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 way back to the olden days, and. Uh, uh, his whole family is blessed and uh, and and movers and shakers, just like my family. And so it's a privilege, a blessing, and an honor for me to uh, present you guys to my friend uh, DJ Fritzo in the house. Welcome, man. Hello. He ain't looking at me. Can you, can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I hear you. My volume was down. My bad. Let me turn this. Let me turn my old school hip hop down real quick. I don't want to get charged by anybody. How you doing, man? Okay. Let me tell good, you something. Man, good. Listen, the last time I seen you, you didn't have all them locks. <laughs> That's how long it's been. That's crazy, bro. It went, wow. Like, listen, I seen I seen Bob twice. Since the last time I seen you, um, once okay. when I was okay. once I was on the road with the Backstreet Boys, and then once uh, at my brother's wedding, at G's wedding. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I see a lot of your um your siblings. You know, That's I know in my mind, I've seen you. You know, not too long ago because I keep seeing your siblings, so I automatically <laughs> throw you in the pot as well. But you're right; what? I haven't seen you in a while. We, we're like living vicariously through each other, basically. Yeah. Me and my siblings. It's good to see you, man. And uh, I want to I wanna get to it, but but definitely, it's definitely great to see you first and foremost. And uh, yeah, and I'm glad are. that I'm still glad that you're uh, that you're rocking it. Um, so first first thing I want to ask you, um, and I have to do this because of the platform that it is. And and I and I and I don't think that you, um, I don't think that it would be a question that that you'd stray away from. Uh, I want to want to. I'm not the father. I'm not the father. <laughs> he's still he's still funny as hell. <laughs> oh, we got okay. We, I got I got mad folk on on Instagram too. I'm trying to pay attention to both things. You are funny though. Uh, I know you're not the father, and um, but tell me this. So. When, when in your life, when in your life do you have your first remembrance of 
racism or any kind of racial division or any kind of acceptance issue? That's a good question, man. Um, you know, I tell people this all the time. Uh, my first real, because you know, growing up, it, first of all, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. So yes, at, you know, my neighborhood at that time is a little different now, but my neighborhood at that time was predominantly, you know, black, uh, Hispanic, you know, a lot of West Indians, a lot of Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. So there were like a few white people in there. But you know, growing up in that environment, you know, you didn't really feel any kind of racism because you wasn't, you never went outside your boundaries. Right. You knew where not to go. I knew not to go to like I knew not to go to like Italian neighborhoods, like Bensonhurst and Bay Ridge, where they you know right where, right um, where they shot Saturday Night Fever. But you know we knew not to go there because that was like mafia town and Italians wasn't messing around. You know right. Um, so other than that, you know I didn't really have to experience that type of racism. I'm sure my parents did, but they never really told us about it. That much. So, right. But so your first first experience, I think it was yeah. Go no go ahead. Yeah, my folks, you know, they were, you know, I'm sure they experienced a lot coming to America in the 50s. Um, but for me personally, when I really felt it was I was in grammar school and, you know, we went to like a, a we went to like this kind of grammar school for like gifted kids. It was like from, from sixth grade to eighth grade. And what they would do, they would take us on these trips outside of the city to expose us to different things and, you know, tourist sites like Washington, D.C., blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, so this time they took us to Boston, you know, to go see where, you know, all the, you know, um, patriotic things were and blah, 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 blah. All the tourist sites, you know, from the 1700s were over there. So we're in Boston. And, uh, you know, I was there with my, my late cousin, Reggie. Reggie will say, you know. Yeah, Reggie? yeah, man. To, to, to Uncle Reg. Anyway, so this is like sixth grade. So we were out there, and I remember we had to go see, we went to see a movie. Like after the whole day of activities and touring, they were like, okay, kids, we're going to put you on a little school bus, and we're going to go see a movie in the town for recreation. And I forgot what the movie was. It was like some kind of disco movie or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so mind you, we're all like inner city kids, you know, from New yep. York, you know, yep. mainly black and Hispanic, right? So we, you know, we're in the bus and then we go to this, this is like my first time seeing a mall because back then we didn't have malls in New York, you know, everything was right. mom and pop shops. So we were at this giant mall and I was like, yo, this is like the movies and everything, just like look at the mall. <laughs> and as we were walking, at, exiting the bus, coming out the mall, there were a bunch of high school kids, you know, from the town, from, you know, Massachusetts or whatever, from Boston, that were in the parking lot. So they were yeah. kind of looking at it or whatever, whatever. And, you know, we didn't pay no mind to that, because we're like, you know, you know, we were in sixth, seventh, and sixth and seventh grades, we were like, you know, we're from New York, so we had that walk, that attitude. Right. So, I, all right, so we go in, we go past all the kids in the parking lot, go see the movie theater, we see the movie, enjoy the movie, and then when we come out, we're coming out the movie theater, and we're walking back, and it's dark now, you know, we're all like, you know, having fun, walking back to our bus. And then we just hear distant, we hear shouting in the background. We don't know where it's coming from because it's so dark. But all we hear is something like, go home, niggers, or whatever, whatever. We're like, huh? Yeah. Like, who are they, who are they talking to? They not, right. must not be talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> so we just look around and, you know, we had like a white teacher. And the white teacher was like, she got all nervous and everything. She says, oh, my God, let's, let's come on, let's hurry up and go back to the bus. And we're like, for what? Like, talking to us. All of a sudden, I don't know, it's just like a rain of like bottles, sticks, stones, debris just flying through the air. Damn. We're like, oh, coming at us, like really, like it was like pouring down rain. So we're like, holy shit. And then we started running. So we ran to the bus. Wow. The bus, you know, we, we, you know, we got out of there. And then our teacher was like telling us, like, we were like, what the fuck is going on? And teacher was like, yo, that's, you know, they're just some racist kids and try to ignore it. It just happens when you travel outside of New York City. That's... That was our first real, like. So you had, you had like a real scenario. <laughs> you had like a, yeah. you, you had like a do the right thing movie moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, real quick, before we, before we go further, I have to, um, to give some props to our uh, first major sponsor, which is Goran Brothers. Uh, they rock with us. Awesome. 
And uh, and then um, also want to say hi to a couple of folks who are like uh, avid uh, uh, partakers of the show. Shannon Fouch, um, Donnell Jones is in the house with us tonight. Um, uh, let's see, we got uh, Crafty Rabbit and a couple other folks. So everybody who's joined in, I uh, appreciate it. Keep on listening. Tell your friends to tune in. We got my brother, um, my brother DJ Fritz O in the house. And uh, and so we're going to pick his mind apart and find out, you know, what's going on in uh, in the life of him. By the way, one more thing before I continue my bad, uh, uh, G.J. Fritzo, um, I want to make sure that everybody knows that if you want to get some uh, some headwear, we got our own special code now um, from Goren Brothers. So that's um, uh, www.gorenbrothers.com, excuse me, dot Goren, Goren.com forward slash discount forward slash uh food for action 10 or you can go to checkout and then put food for action 10 food for action in capital letters um take advantage of that buy me a hat if you don't want one for yourself or get one for dj fritzo so um so fritz um sorry about that i got you know i gotta pay the bills um so so uh good you got sponsors man truth right so um oh you know i'm trying to get more man we got to get this thing happening you know got to get more stretch more 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 uh more reach so um so tell me man so what has been up when i when when we were last um last this was like um 94 right mm -hmm. yep 94 and you was doing mad movie stuff you was part of production crews and stuff like that you was also mad dj and mad doing beats with uh gene um, what's, okay. what's been happening since that last time that I've been, been that's around? A, that's a lot of, that's a lot of what's been happening. Let me, well, um, let me, give me, give me, give me the breakdown. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Uh, <laughs> I'll just give you a, a, a scenario, short scenarios. Uh, you know, just working on films and stuff. Um, you know, I ended up, uh, I don't know if I, when you were around, I was, I think I was doing music videos. And um, I was doing a lot of music videos at the time, you know. Yeah. I, for some reason, I ended up, I started doing a lot of reggaeton videos early on. This is like 2003, 2004. True. You know, I don't know where the connection came from. Actually, you know, I know where the connection came from. I had a friend uh, named Max Perez. Yeah, and, I remember Max. Uh, remember Max? Yeah. Yeah. He's doing really well. Did you follow him on Instagram? Okay, I'll get him. I'll get him. Um, remind me to fast forward because I'm working with him on a, on a project right now, so I gotta remind. Okay, him. all right. Make project. sure, yeah, you got. But anyway, that. but anyway, he was he was at the time working with um, a group called MVP, um, which was headed by uh, you know Robert Clavillis, the guy from CNC Music Factory. Yep, yep. So we ended up doing some songs and music videos with them for a while. You know, got on MTV, blah blah blah. So after that, you know. A lot of uh, Latino uh, rappers, reggaeton artists early on started calling me up to do videos. I did a couple of big videos True. for them. And then after that, you know, uh, I got into TV a little bit. I worked at Montel Williams, the talk show, for like nice. seven years. True. So I was working with him. Really cool brother, man. Really, you know, he's like historic. Like he had one of the longest, as a black male, he had like the longest running um talk show on in American history. That's, you know, that's he was literally like right behind Oprah, like, you know, uh, and no one really talks about it, but you know, he was a good brother, you know, he, yeah. you know, he showed me a lot about TV production, um, you know, how to get stuff on air, how to like the process of putting shows together. So after his show ended, I, I, I hooked up with a company and we started developing TV shows, mm -hmm. working on projects, other projects, working on other movies, uh, I had a big highlight where, you know, I sold a show. I started making my own shows, and I created a show that I kind of sold to VH1, but yeah. it never got past the stage of of uh, the focus group. Okay, that was like an experience. It was called uh, uh, it was called Strong Island, and it was about these four white rappers that my brother was managing at the time. Uh -huh. No good people. I never you heard have you ever, ever heard of those guys? I, I think I might have. I don't know uh, if you were Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it was like four rappers, you know, and it was really interesting. They were from Long Island and, you know, and I would just like, when they were in the studio, I would just follow them around and videotape, you know, capture as much stuff as I could. 
Right. And I said, you know what? These guys are funny. I can make a show out of this. So I put together a little trailer, if you want to call it, and sent it to some of my, my friends. And then somebody sent it to uh, VH1. And they were like, yo, we want to make this a TV show. Because it was, it was essentially almost like, it was like almost like um, the Jersey Shore, but these guys could actually do something. They were actually talented. <laughs> <laughs> they can do something. So, um, so that was like I spent like we spent like a year and a half put it together, and VH1 right. was like we were like so close to getting it on air, and they were like all executives of VH1 were like, "Yo, we really got this want to go, but before we give you the green light, we want to take it to a focus group." And I was like, "Ah, oh. nah." <laughs> took it to a focus group, and the focus group was mainly like you know the core audience of VH1 at that time, which was right. women. This is right. like 2012, 2013. You know, they would ask like questions like, so where do you see the show fitting in between, you know, basketball wives and mob wives? You know, they were like, you know, four white male rappers and they're not even famous. Where would, how would that fit? <laughs> you know, so they killed it. They killed it in the, um, in the focus group. Guess what? That's all right, though, because you got in the door. And I'm, uh, the, yeah, one thing, was, the one thing I know about you. Listen, the one thing I know about you and your brothers uh, is that y'all definitely know how to capitalize on every little inkling of a step that you make in a direction. And, uh, you know, as crazy as I was back then, I noticed that. I got to tell you. Well, I you was know, it's, just, it's, just, it's getting experience. And, um, you know, it's getting experience. It was a good experience for me. And, and this is currently what I'm doing as – Still DJing, but you know, not at DJing. I slowed down because of the Corona, COVID. Yeah. It's kind of actually forced me to get back more into my TV life. Yeah. So I've been spending this time just like writing, you know, developing shows with friends of mine. Uh, with Max, as a matter of fact, with Max, I'm putting a show, a real, I'm, I'm creating a reality show around his family because he has okay. these two kids. He has two kids. I think uh, the oldest one is like maybe 21 maybe like 19 or 20 and the youngest one is uh i think she's like 12 or 13 and they're both like these amazing performers they make their own music individually they sing right. you know they have a recording studio and they're on instagram and max does max is like a self-help guru um oh, yeah. you know yeah he has a show similar to yours it's called maximize oh it's um, his wife does a lot of stuff so i was like man you know you guys would be like a very great like you guys would be like a good, positive, you know, Latino family that no one has ever seen before on TV. Right. So we're <laughs> like right now we're putting together everything. Our first shoot is next week, as a matter that's, of fact. Nice. Yeah. That that's cool, man. I'm definitely gonna look him up. It's funny because the last time I remember him, let me see how do I say this. Last time I I seen him, uh, he was kind of like uh his own his own AT and T, but um. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, you're taking me way back now. <laughs> wow, I forgot all about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, that's good, man. That's good. Um, uh, okay, so tell me this. So, so you're, uh, so as far as the DJ part of what you're doing now, you're, you, because I know the other day I, I was trying to get up with you and you were doing a private joint. So, so you're, are you, is, is it mostly private, uh, uh, party well, because of COVID, you know, I had like a good uh, the last four or five years. You know, I've been DJing since you knew me, but it was really yeah. the last, you know, five or six years. I started getting some traction and, you know, I, I created a nice niche for myself where I was doing a lot of like media events and DJing for brands. And, you know, uh, and I really enjoyed that because I helped me network. You know, I was yep. flying around. I did a, I DJ. You know, DJ in Cuba uh, two years ago, uh, Australia, I did a party out there, France. Nice. Um, you know, uh, Trinidad, uh, a couple of, you know, a couple of countries, couple, and all around the States. You know, I was DJing, I was DJing, for, I, did, I opened up, I DJ twice for two Super Bowls. Nice. Um, one, uh, I think it was 2013 when it was here in New York, I, I DJed for NFL. AM, which is like their morning show. Yep, yep. I was like the onset. I was like the onset DJ while they had the analysts. And they would like come right. to me, hey DJ, and I'll play something. And right. then I DJed uh, three years ago for Super Bowl um, 
and it was in Minnesota. And I got to do uh, DJ uh, Rolling Stone had like this giant, amazing party, and I was like the opening DJ. So I opened up for like it was like an act. It was I opened up for uh, Migos, right? Um, uh, T Pain, you know, uh, someone else I forget. But that was like an amazing experience to be in, in Minneapolis DJ. So I was getting events like that, and this summer I had a, a few more big events to DJ, but they were all canceled because of, of the COVID. Do you remember the so, old? Uh, you know, I've been doing online stuff, trying to get that, you know, a lot of fun online. But, yeah. you know, when you go to Instagram, they cut you off a lot because Instagram, technically, they, you're not allowed to play other people's music. Right. So, you know, you try to do as much as you can, unless you're like D-Nice, like a big name like D-Nice. Right, right, right. He was able to get the blessings of Mark Zuckerberg himself, you know. Right. That's cool. Plus, well, of course, when get kicked off, you know. <laughs> Look, when 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 uh, Michelle Obama goes on your live, I'm sure that that everybody's gonna move mountains to make sure you can play whatever you want exactly, to play. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I've been that lucky. Uh, just like but, just like, um, I, like I had to mute my TV when I when when you came on. I mean, my radio yeah. when you came on because <laughs> I can't afford to get shut down. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They come after you, man. which is a shame, man, because. You know, it's really it's really the greedy record labels. It's not necessarily Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. It's, the, it's the record labels yeah. that yeah. come after Facebook. And like, if you play this music, we're gonna sue you. Right. So Facebook and Instagram, you know, same company. They're like, well, we're not gonna try to get penalized because for you guys, True. you know. And it's really a shame because you know, every in my mind, every industry is, especially during when the heat of the quarantine and everything, every industry was trying to give back to consumers and and you know. You know, Netflix was having specials to join, you know, cut, yep. you know, giving you discounts. The music industry wasn't doing anything. They were like, look, no. you got to get our money. So whatever, you know. Isn't that a shame? Think, yeah. Because they find they find out that they don't that they they can't make as much money from some of the regular routes anymore because people are people are releasing their own stuff. And so they're trying to steal every penny. They own part of every company. Got they got they got their, their hands in SoundCloud. They got their hands in every other you know somewhere or another in each other outlet. And uh, and they're trying to get them pennies. Believe it. And the way I see it is like this is a, it's a you know a gross mistake on their part because this is basically a repeat of what they did back in the '90s when Napster came out. Napster, yep. Remember when Napster came out? Yep. And the record labels like, are we gonna fight them? They were gonna sue individual people if you had MP3s in your library, blah blah blah. Yeah. And they went all out, and then that was like the downfall of the industry, you know. Yep, that backfired on them. <laughs> it backfired. Instead of embracing it, you know, this how can we work together? You know, they try to fight it and they took a big, big hit. Yes, they and did. The same thing is happening with this, with the, with the, with the live streams. You know, with yeah. DJs and musicians. Instead of letting us try to figure our way, how can we work together with you? They try. They're fighting us, and now people are coming with alternative ways to do it, or other right. other venues like Twitch is getting hot right now. Mixcloud has a, a platform now where you can play music for free. You know, so other people are finding ways around it. You know, and yeah. then music business is going to be, you know, asked out again. You know? Yep. I like this one thing that you do. Um, I, I caught you. Uh, this might have been a month ago now, and uh, you know, I I have to I have to follow so many people all the time because you know that are going to come on the show or whatever. So I got to follow their stuff to study people and all that. But I I caught you doing this one uh, this one live DJ set, and you did the dopest thing. You had like the videos of the songs. Yeah. And Stuff and and stuff and you was doing like a and and you didn't even stop it there. You also was like having people name like what soundtrack or movie the song was from and all kind yeah, of. That, like was, that was a special party. That was a uh, that was a uh, movie soundtrack. I was playing like just movie soundtrack videos. You know? Yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah, I might do one tonight for the fun of it if I can get away with it. I heard like I haven't done one. In, that was probably the last one I did. Yeah. And. Since then, face uh, Instagram has become you know gotten a lot tighter. They be, yeah, they they were trying to marshal you. You bet. Well, I, I, it's kind of funny because Instagram and Facebook, right, are owned by the same folk, but yet you can get away with different stuff on each different platform. And I'm wondering why, why they got it set up like that. Well, I think because um, 
I think because it depends on how much traffic one platform is receiving, you know? Yeah. And I think uh, Instagram has much more uh, high volume. Yeah. So that's all I can think of. But as of now, you know, from what I heard from other DJs, they're both, they're, they're trying to equalize both. So they're going to enforce, you know, regulations equally on both uh, platforms. So I'm going to give it a try tonight after I sign out, sign off with you. I'm going to try to go live <laughs> and see how long. I can. I normally, I, before I used to be able to do at least 40 minutes. Yeah. Maybe I'll do 15 before they cut me off. Who knows? <laughs> well, look, if you do that, well, I mean, you're going give, to give the audience all your uh, stuff anyways. And then, uh, of course, there's going to be mad folks that watch us later. Uh, some sometimes people catch us now, and sometimes it be looking like one or two people, and then I'm done, and it's like a hundred and something, and I'm like, what? So I don't even yeah, understand yeah. how that works, right? But 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 then le- later on through the week, it'll be mad folks that have seen it. So I want to make sure that that you uh, that you let folks know where they can catch you for yeah. everything, and also how they can follow you with the projects that you're doing, man. Because you know, and I want you to give me mad peeps like. Out front, I want to know, like, about a couple weeks at least before you're dropping something, I got to get the info. I know I ain't the most important media outlet in the world, but. My best night. You're doing your thing, man. That's how everything I, starts, man. That's how, I got to get how it. You started, you know, you got to start. What you're doing, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Getting your name out there and you're trying to have um, positive, you know, information. Yeah. That's good. Look, I can tell you this, is that, that it, it has been a blessing uh, uh, in many ways. And there's so many people, man, that have jumped to coming on this show. Um, just like yourself. Uh, I mean, fat man, scoop, Donnell Jones, uh, all kind of folks is, are are coming on and it's crazy. Queen, uh, uh, Kimberly Latrice Jones was on a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, she activist, New York times, bestselling author. I mean, so, so, so it's been a blessing. And, and, and I think it's just because I have become the anti Obi that I used to be. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, so, what's, going on, what's going on out there with, you know, with all this in the middle of the quarantine and, you know, the Black Lives Matter and how is well, that, how are you guys handling it out, out, out there? Well, You're see, in South and, Carolina, right? No, I'm in, I'm in Ohio. And so, and, oh, you know, yeah, because I, I, you know, I get my treatment here. I, you know, I have this chronic Lyme disease battle that, I, that I'm dealing with. And so, oh, yeah. and so I get treated at the Cleveland Clinic here. Um, it's one of the better uh, hospital systems for that. So, but, but anyways, uh, all that aside, um, so, but because of my situation, I can't take part in some things because I can't do a lot of f- physical things a lot of times. And so that's what ended up making me start this. Hey, what's oh. up, Farat? We got, uh, we got my dog, d- dog from Holland checking in. He's uh, over in Holland. Farat, what's up, dude? Um, so we're talking with DJ Fritzo and um, brought to you by me and uh, Goran Brothers. Uh, they're uh, the most dopest hats in the universe. Um, and uh, he's given us some scoops on what's been up. He's a longtime brother of mine, him and his family, man, just amazing people. Uh, like, it, it's, it's so funny because um, you guys... Uh, you and your brothers, and uh, I miss your mom, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just uh, you guys so dope mentally, so dope musically, but also y'all got the biggest hearts, man. Y'all be loving on folk, and and that's oh, not normal. You. That's not a normal thing, man, especially, especially in the race that we're in, you know what I mean? And that's not yeah. just, not, not just music, but also in society, you know, a lot of, a lot of times we are our own victims in certain ways. And maybe I shouldn't say that too loud on a show like this, but sometimes we are because we get in our own way and each other's, Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, being, being, you know, so self uh, absorbed in, in, in our motivations and our, and our movements and so on. And you guys definitely showed us um, way back when, about how that's not what it's about, and uh, so I appreciate you guys for that. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Carlton Avenue Hotel. What? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to let nobody know where you were. I just man, I was, yeah, like, everybody <laughs> rolled through at the house, man. It was a, it was a good time. Yeah, I don't tell nobody to D train or nothing like that. I'm just I'm just yeah. trying. To, 
<laughs> I'm just trying to say you're in Brooklyn. <laughs> the neighborhood has changed. It's still the same, but it's changed a lot as well. You know? Yeah. So, so yeah, tell me, tell me about Brooklyn, man, because when we were there, you know, we was all engulfed in us and y'all and trying to make the thing yeah. and, and the big and the big red bone bash when Marky was kind of hemmed up. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> that that was what, yeah, what, what, man. what up now? we can't do those type of parties anymore because the neighbor the neighbors have changed and you know, yeah. there's a lot of cameras in the neighborhood, you know. Oh, the yeah, and the music's too loud. They call it we used to do we used to do a barbecue called the Stone Brown Barbecue. Yeah. Uh, after you know, we have a record. I'm in this. I'm in Wait, the recording. Bring that right don't, don't don't talk about that yet. I'm gonna bring that up. I'm gonna ask you about that. But tell me about okay. tell me about the barbecue. But I'm gonna bring that other so thing. We up. these uh, barbecues, man. That was like it started off as a way of to thank our clients for right. coming, blessing the studio. So we would just invite our clients and friends, and they would come in the backyard, and then you know eating or whatever and it was all these you know all this talent and then every once in a while somebody would like hey you know like can i sing something or whatever so we you know put a mic out in the backyard and they would sing or somebody would play guitar or whatever and then for whatever reason we decided to do it again the next summer we did it again the next summer and it was like double the size <laughs> and the next summer after that we did it again and now we had like a, a stage and we had like all these acts you know nice. we curated it, you nice. know we had system out there and it got so big we would have like 300 people at the house we had like celebrities yeah. come over true you know aj remember aj from 106 in the park he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Amazing. you know a lot and then we had like really great talent man we had like i even did like, i showed you the video man i even put a stop the video together where um we had two or three artists that were like on our stage first and then they ended up being on like american idol oh true uh, american Top talent Nice. One Australian girl I used to come and perform and be in our studio ended up. She's like a background singer for um, Justin Timberlake and all his shows. Nice. You know, uh, so it was just like a really a great uh, 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 performance space for like new talent, you know, yeah. local talent. And it got so big to a point where I had we had to move it out of our backyard because it was too big. So we yeah. had to rent out a location not too far away, and we did it. We did two more times at that location. Where yeah. we had and we started charging people to get in because it was like we had to cover our own costs. Sure. And it was the same thing. A lot of people, whatever. We had managers calling us up. Oh, can I sound on your stage? That's how insane it got. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. That's dope. So so tell me, because I I know you was about to say it. So tell me about the um um the studio. Because I from to what I'm knowing, just is that you because y'all got that big old joint there. And so you turn part of it into a recording studio. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know, remember when 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 you guys were here, when Mookie was here, we had like a little something in like all the way in the back, like in the clock right. basement. Right. You know, right. Like a little, a tiny little corner. <laughs> right. A tiny little corner. So um, I don't know if you if you ever met Dennis, who was like a good friend of mine. He lived like around the corner at the time, uh, well, a couple blocks away, and he was like uh -huh. an engineer. Um, he met that's, Mookie a couple that's who's on the site. That's who's on the website. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So he he lives around a couple. You know, people think he's my cousin. I call him my cousin because we're basically like you know, I've known him since I've known you guys. As a matter of fact, you know, we all met right. at the same time. Um. Anyway, so uh, he had to leave his apartment, and you know, the studios, big. He used to work. He used to work in all the big studios, and all the big studios were dying down. Like you know, the studios that we used to go to. Yeah, like, platinum, 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 platinum. Hit Factory, all those places were closing down because, you know, it was just easier for people to start making music in their basement. At home, yeah. Once the, equipment, once the technology and the internet came, people were yep. like, Yo, I'm not spending $200 an hour at Hit Factory when I can right. do it in my basement. Right. So he started losing jobs. So we were like, you know what, man, why don't you, um, you know, build a, you know, we have a space in our basement. Why don't you just kick that out and you could do your little studio here. And at the same time, my brother had a couple artists. He had an amigo. Yeah, you know, he had Enrico, the, the rapper, um, and then he had like some other. He had a girl, I forgot her name. Anyway, so Bob was like, "Yo, you can you can work on my artist, and at the same time do your own projects for money, and we're all in the family." So long story short, he opened up the studio here. It was still small, 
And over the years, we decided to just put money in it, put money in it. And then finally, he turned it into a bit. Now it's like this big, big professional studio. It's crazy. You know, I've like seen you it. Saw it, you're like, oh my God. This is like, well, I've seen, I've, yeah, I've seen the footage online. I yeah. was like, what? Yeah, so now yeah, that's dope. Studio, we have like, you know, we do mixing, mastering, recording. Um, we're actually getting back into music production now because of, you know, the quarantine, the COVID, we have so much time. A lot yeah. of clients weren't coming in at that time. So we was like, you know, let's just start making music. So we started making tracks and remixes for some artists and stuff. Um, we're about to release a song that we did with this girl from Long Island. Her name is um, Mistina Soul. And she wrote a beautiful song uh, called Elijah about uh, Elijah McClain, the, the, the kid yep. that was killed by cops, uh, yep. I don't know, four or five months ago. Yep. So it was a beautiful song, and we, we you know we put a hot beat underneath, underneath it. And so we're going to put a little video out and just put it out there just, just to show people like, what we can do yeah. in terms of music production. And also, you know, we want to contribute to, like, you know, the awareness that's going on right now. You know, nice. What's happening. Yo, that's perfect. You get to hear that pretty soon. You know, that's that, perfect. I better get that. You know, for this show, we better yeah. get that. Um, listen. Uh, so, so if people are wanting to do some business at, at at your spot, like, is it only like you know? I mean, after all this time, is it only like high dollar or or can you know can can the young folks come? come? You know, just you know, where you can find us on Instagram at Stone Brown Studios. One word. It's like brownstone, but in reverse. Stone in reverse, Brown yeah. Studios. That's on Facebook, Instagram, you know, if you're in New York, whatever, or even if you're not, we have people, you know, we have clients in different countries in Denmark that want to get stuff mixed, you right, know, right. they send yeah. stuff over, um, or they need like a New York rapper to do a verse and the New York rapper will do it here and then they send it out to Denmark, whatever, sure. you know, so we, we do a lot, you know, the beauty, it's a different world from when we, you know, when we were doing music back, in, you know, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Collaborations are so much easier because of the yeah. internet. You know. Yeah. Um. What about every uh, time? I'm sorry. You know. Yeah. What about um? What about if people have uh ideas? You know, for for shows or pilots or uh or maybe they got a story idea but they don't know how to do it. Do you guys do that kind of stuff? Well, you know, um, we can help people out if it's something that's interesting and they really need help and they're serious. Like, can they submit um, stuff to you? Yeah, they can always send me stuff, you know, okay. at, uh, you know, at DJ Fritzo or my website, you know, djfritzo.com. Oh, you know. see now, I don't even have that. I got to add that to some post show stuff for you. Um, oh, okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah, because I hadn't, I, I, um, I didn't put that on, on there. So, um, so I'll, I'll make yeah, sure I do know. that. And um, so, so, all right, so people can, can get down with, with, uh, with Stone Brown um and they can they can submit stuff uh they can find out where you're at um they can find out about upcoming projects um i couldn't find you on facebook uh under dj fritzo i you know what's so funny i don't have a facebook page i just do everything through my all my dj stuff is on instagram is there a reason for that or? page is like professional you know Okay. So, I mean, my Facebook page is for my, you know, my just for personal you stuff. People. Right. And, gotcha. And, gotcha. And, my, and my film stuff. Like I feel that. Film friends on Facebook. So it's like weird. I have like these two worlds, yeah. like DJing right. and film. Right. And it's like, so then that's my bad. For, that's my bad for putting it on the promo. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> <You know>? Whoops. <laughs> it's all I'll, good, man. You know, I'll edit that as well. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at promotion. So you know. Uh, I'm, hey, about, I'm actually learning a lot by watching you, how you move and stuff. Listen, let me tell you something. If you saw how long it takes me to do them little things, yeah. <laughs> trust me, I don't know. Like, I need an assistant back. Let me tell you how bad I need one. I actually hit up Youngstown University. is not too far from me. And I hit up this this uh, professor who teaches uh, movies and this, that, and the other. And I, uh -huh. I hit her up for to get a, 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 what do you call them people? You know to work for Intern? free, yeah. Intern. <laughs> yeah. Slaves. Slaves. Yeah. yeah, yes. I hit her up for an intern, and uh, and so w I'm waiting for a word back on that because I, man, I'm struggling to do it. You know, I, I do my best because I want, you know, I want people to 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 feel what's gonna happen. I don't want people to be like, you know, dang, he just got some friends coming on or whatever. So so I do my best, but um, 
enough about that. So, all right. So tell me, so, so the project that you and, 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 uh, Max are doing, um, do you have any kind of landing time for when it's going, you know, be ready for, well, we, we're starting to shoot, um, next week is our first shoot. Uh, actually not next week, uh, in November, November, the first week of November, we start shooting and we're, what we're doing is we're putting together like a mini, like a mini pilot, you know, they call okay. it a sizzle, like a trailer. It's like a trailer. It's called a sizzle reel. Yep. Business. Yep. Yep. It's only like three minutes to four minutes long. And then we're going to just take that and shop it to like a different networks and a lot of yep. our contact, you know, just to give them an idea of what the show is. And hopefully yep. we can land it with either a network or even with a brand. You know, a lot of brands now want to get down with, you know, diversity. Yep. Um, it's not just black people. They're looking for all yep. kinds of diversity. Yep. They realize that diversity sells. Yep. You know. People want to hear different stories, whether it's Latino, yep. or it's Black, or it's Asians. People, you know, right. America is a diverse um, country, which is, yep. you know, a lot of yep. what's happening around when you see Black Lives Matter, you know, a lot of other minorities don't realize or don't want to accept the fact that they will benefit as well. You That's know? true. Some that is very true. What come out of Black Lives Matter is going to help Hispanics, it's going to help yep. Asians, it's going to the same yeah, way the, the spoke, it helped everybody. That's right. That's right. That's right. No doubt about that. The 60s helped everybody. Yeah. You know, and, that, and, that's, always, and yeah. you know, I'm sorry, go ahead. A little little delay. I always have a bone. I always get I always get a little agitated when I see minorities come down on you know black activists and whatever. I'm like, do you realize you're gonna benefit from this? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. you're on the front lines, you're gonna yeah. benefit your kids will benefit from this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you wanna hear something funny? So I, I don't do this very often, but uh, last night I was watching this comedian lady. Black, it was a black co co uh, lady comedian, and she closes her show saying, um, "She said uh, she said she was talking about Black Lives Matter, and then all of a sudden, all the audience, because it was a mix of audience, and it was like Woo! and all that, right?" And she said, "Wait a minute," <laughs> she goes, "She said, uh, she said, you know, she said for all you people." Who aren't down with Black Lives Matter? Uh, you know, one of these days, if the country keeps going the way it is with people like Trump, uh, she said they're going to be another country that's going to come in here and take over our country. And then guess what? Y'all going to be niggas just like us, and we got experience at it. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I was like, that that killed me, man. I was like, what? <laughs> Oh, man. That's so, true. Yeah, so it is true that, that you know, and I think that's one of the re one of the reasons why I do this. I mean, uh, you can look back, you know, whenever you get a moment. I know free time is hard to find, but at, you can find out why I started this and all that. It was like literally, it was it was the saddest moment of probably that I experienced being here, just sitting here watching society and things that are going on. But yeah. but fast forward, it it enabled me to see the that that um that there's a different way to do this it don't it doesn't have to be done just as um as me being irate although i have times on the show when i am very mad and pissed off and yelling and whatever else but but i also make it known just as you heard in the beginning where i i want people to understand that this is a platform for every single person that wants to come on can come on ask questions except for today um, they might be able to ask some when you're gone, but you know it's we're moving too fast. But but um, unless you want to do some questions, but um, but what I'm doing, but what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make sure that we all have this communication path path open, this pathway, so that we're all understanding each other's experiences, understanding why people think in hateful ways, why people think in positive ways, why people think love, why people belong to this belief system, that belief system, so on and so forth. And, and when we have that understanding, it's going to help a lot. But but let me say this. It doesn't just help in a in a you know in the peaceful way that I hope it does. It also helps us be like like how the, how the old Italian mafia used to say. You understand who your friends are and who your enemies are through this kind of conversation. And so 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 I'm I'm trying to do both of those things at the same time. Create the conversation to close the gap or to 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 fill in the gap, but also want to make people make sure that they're aware of the fight that they're yeah. doing. Just like, now, uh, before I let you go, because I know you got to do mad stuff, I want to ask you uh, a couple questions about voting. We can't end yeah. without. 
So tell me, um, voting starts tomorrow where you are, right? No, it started yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Okay. So tell me, um, tell me, like, what what is what are the encouraging things or what are the problematic things where you live? Because I know it's different in each place. Everybody has. We all have our own things that are happening. Man, so far, you know, it's all about lines, 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 lines. The yesterday, the first day, uh, there are two voting spots in my neighborhood, uh, the Brooklyn Museum. And, you know, we have a, a stadium downtown Brooklyn now, uh, the Barclays Stadium. With the Brooklyn yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So shout out to the NBA. The NBA basically volunteered or donated like most of their stadiums uh, to be um voting uh voting yeah. uh, 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 places yep they so, did that um, yeah so um both of those places i heard like the lines were like you know four hour wait whatever and it's kind of sad that you know in this we're an advanced society and we people have to wait four hours to vote uh, like i'm voting on thursday i'm hoping that it'll die down a little bit so i don't have to wait four hours <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or at least there'll be more, um, like the workers will be more, you know, the first day, they're still trying to get into the groove and yep. make a mistake, you know, hopefully yeah. it'll be a more well-oiled machine by Thursday, so I can go down there in an hour. But, you know, people have been very positive. There's a lot of movements, like there's a lot, a lot of different organizations, you know, um, when we were having the marches and the protests during, you know, the, the pandemic, after, especially when George Floyd set it off. Yeah, you know, I jumped in. I, you know, I don't know if you saw on my Instagram. I jumped yeah, in a bunch of protests. They were going up and down, um, you know, in my neighborhood. So I was like, let's yeah. just jump in. And you know, my nephew, not my godson, you know, Reggie's, uh, Reggie's son. Yeah. Um, I call him my, my nephew, but you know, he became a prominent uh, leader in like you know, in terms of like a lot of protests. Yeah. You know, he had a group and. After the protest, now he's running for a local. His name was Chi C H I O S E O S S E. He's yep. running for local um, uh, city council here in Brooklyn. So nice. I'm really proud of him. He's like one of the youngest guy, one of the youngest delegates. He's only like 20, uh, 21. Nice. Uh, 22. Uh, 22. Yeah. And um, but you know it was good to be out there. You know to see it was mainly like a lot of young kids. So it was good to, to be out there to support them in the marches. And they were very peaceful. Um, there were not too much, there wasn't as much violence as you would think, you know, and, you know, places like Fox News, they exaggerate, it, there'll be like one thing happening in New York and they'll exaggerate it, like, oh my God, New York is burning in flames. And meanwhile, we're sitting outside having lattes and, you know, <laughs> drinking beer. And I'm like, where the, what fires are they talking about, man? I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's really exact. New York is actually lovely right now with this pandemic, you know? Yeah. If it wasn't for the loss of income and jobs, I, yeah. I would wish New York could be like this all the time. <laughs> I know, saw I see going. some of the stuff that you post. I see some of the stuff you post, like one of the things where you was walking somewhere and it was and where they have the outdoor seating that places had to start doing and uh and so on. And, and I, they did they do that in a couple of places here, but also in San Diego where my where my smunchkin, my daughter uh uh mm. lives, and they're doing that kind of stuff up there too. So um, but I, I think that's kind of it's really cool the way that that communities can yeah. can, you know, can uh, what's the word chameleonize or you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, so what would what word um, would you give to Food for Action folks um, encouraging them to vote? How what your you know, what's your view? What do you what would you tell everybody? That one, one, one of the first things I tell people is when I when I want to find out how somebody instead of asking people what who you're gonna vote for, I have a different way to find out. I ask them a simple question which tells me how they're going to vote and who they're gonna vote for. So I ask them, I say, so I say, um, are you in a better place now in 2020 than you were in 2016? Right. So, if somebody says yes that they're in a better place now in 2020, <laughs> you already know who they're voting for. <laughs> you know that emoji? That emoji? Like, I was outside asking somebody that question, and she said, uh, "Yes, I'm in a better place now." I said, "Wait a minute, you're standing, you're, you're talking to me with a mask on." <laughs> I was in a better place. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I said, "Do you have a job?" No. So how are you in a better place? <laughs> Listen. Of course, people think like that. People don't yeah. want to think like that. When you make them yeah. think like that, like 
you know, without putting any judgments on them, just make them ask their own questions and, and they have to answer their own questions. You can see it in their face. They're like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I I like that. I like that question, and I, I mean, you know, I all, I mean, you heard me say it. I, I, I always tell people you got to vote with a purpose. You got to vote with expectation. Yeah. You got to vote with knowledge. There has to be some substance to what you're doing. It can't just be red state, blue state. Can't just be, you know, whatever somebody tells you. You know, yeah. uh, there's got to be there's got to be something behind it because if you don't, if it doesn't have that then you don't know how to hold anybody accountable and you don't understand where to start the voting from you know we 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 know now uh as we get older and wiser that you better know everything about local because that's what it's all about and everything else after local we just do it you know it's you know numbers and numbers and numbers and the uh uh and the what do you what do you call it? the other thing that i was going to ask you about uh the uh shoot uh the 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 I can't. I can't believe I can't remember the name. Uh, it's the thing that we have to fill up. Census. So the census, yeah. and I and I try to explain to people the, the purpose of that. You know, we we have to get more locally motivated. We have to get more community motivated in our votes, and then that'll lead us to the ultimate vote. You know, that'll lead us to the purpose of the ultimate vote, and so on. But um, and uh, so what do you? And by the way, I'm glad for your word on that. What about the census? Um, I know that I didn't figure out to, to do because I traveled around all of, all of my life, so I didn't figure out the sentence until I was like thirty. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> now they come; they were very relentless in in my neighborhood. They were knocking on our doors, and you know, and I, I get I understand how it works. It's important because then politicians could look at the makeup of a neighborhood, yep. and they see there's X amount of you know Latinos in one neighborhood. They're going to go and you know uh, lobby for you know to address their concerns, but they don't know any Latinos live in that neighborhood. They're not going to go and you know address you know concerns that might be beneficial for Latinos. So it's important to go out there and let people know where you live. I, and I understand people are so nervous about like I don't want the government to know about me, but you right. know it's not that they already know about. They want to know about you. They're going to know about you. <laughs> True. Yeah, and and it also and it also helps helps um, with the financial. The divvying out of funds for schools, exactly. for hospital systems, for um, you know libraries, um, any any of those system things that we talk about, um, those things are divvied out and and or redistrict based on these numbers that they get. If our if our local government is working properly, and so so um, so yeah, so good word. Um, well, listen, I know you got plenty to do. You a man with a mission. And uh, and I appreciate you uh, taking time to talk well, to me. Let me ask you a question before I yeah. want to ask something. Are you yeah. still making music? I do, but it's been a little less uh, of late, and that is just literally because of you know some of the physical stuff that I've been going through. It's very time consuming, and I can't do. You know, back in the day, we used to be so consistent with everything. You know, we wake up doing it, go to sleep doing it, drink beer doing it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Wondering what the heck we did the next morning, all that. We so we was always doing it. Now um, it's hard for me to. Sometimes it's hard for me to, unless I have a specific project, like I've done a couple commercials for some local businesses and stuff like that. Unless I have a specific project, it's hard for me to, to get motivated. And I ain't trying to cry no river, but it it just is sometimes just right. because I have to keep such a focus, and sometimes it can be hard to do that. So. Um, so keep me in your prayers for that. Um, your brother actually um, uh, gave me a big blessing uh, not too long ago uh, for that. So so give Bob a uh, mad shout out. He's going to be on here, too. Um, I'm sure he will. He'll tell you a whole bunch, man. Bob wants to be on camera and talk. <laughs> okay. Hey, look here. I got a whole two hours set aside for him. <laughs> Listen, I love you, man. I love you, man. Love Listen, you too, man. I'm gonna be in New York um, in December, finally. Okay. So That'll when I get there, cool. yeah, we got we got to hook up. You know, uh, COVID man, or I haven't seen. I see everybody, man. I see I see Giovanni a lot. I see yep. Joe all the time doing his acting. Yep. He comes to all my he, not, he comes to a few of my parties when I was DJing. True. Um, came by. Yep. With his new wife, I believe, by like one of the time. I see your yeah. sister all the time when I'm out in LA. You know, I hooked up yeah. with some of my good friends. I actually I was DJing a New Year's Eve party uh last year. <laughs> actually last year was last year I was in, in LA. 
and I invited her. She came, had a great time. You know, when, nice. and the guy I was DJing with, he's like a celebrity. He's an uh, uh, analyst on the NFL Network. So it was like a big celebrity, you know, nice. party, whatever. I had a great time. I hooked her up hey, with uh, he his family. You're the only you one, man. <laughs> listen, will you do me a favor? Will you, um, I know it might be hard to think about it, but this is something that I ask all of my folks, especially entertainment folks. When you're doing something new, rather it's a DJ party, you know, something that's big that people can go to or people can watch online or whatever, would you tag me, tag food, tag me in it, in what it, whenever you post? I'll do my best. You know what I'll I'm saying? Do my best for sure. Please, please do, man. Sure. Then I'll I can make sure that all my best. friends are following you, you know? I want people to know where you are. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I All appreciate right. it, man. You gotta hook up with my homeboy. Yep. I have a homeboy out in um in Ohio who uh, was a good friend of uh, me, me and Reggie, and uh, you should interview him, man. He's he's you know he hey. wrote a dope book back in the day about hip hop jewelry, huh? Send me the send me the info. I'll send you his name. Yeah, he might. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what what town he's in or city, but I know he's in that Cleveland, Ohio. Don't area. it don't matter. I'll yeah, it don't matter. You said he's good. I'm put him. I, I put him down. No doubt. Okay. All right. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. Well, man, love you, man. Love, love to Eric. Give love to Joey too. You know, I'll talk to Bob. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. All right. Mad love. Thank don't you, forget. Man. Hey, yes. we're voting, man. Big numbers. All right. Love you, man. We'll wrap soon. Yes. All right. Again. Yes, All right, sir, man. Peace. You too. Um. Yeah. So, folks, that that was uh, DJ Fritzo. Dope brother, man. Their whole family is like they're freaking musical genius, folks. Just and you know, and and they're and they're like I said, their hearts, man, are huge. I mean, that you know, you you don't you just don't get to you don't get to have those kind of folks be so close to you, you know. And we we went down some heavy roads um, trying to you know create um, trying to create success in music and. And but also as as family, man, we were so close and we, we did the hustle um, in a good way in, in the music industry together. And, and we learned a lot from them and and they might have learned some stuff from us, too. So it was pretty cool. Um, let's see. Um, what's good, bro? It's Harrison. OK, so anybody who's been talking, man, please let me apologize. It's been so long since I uh, since I uh, had rapped with him that that I didn't get to check out all the comments. So please forgive me for that. Um, but I appreciate you guys, um, though you thought you are going to order from me. Um, okay. Huh. Uh, I'm not sure if you're talking to me or if you're talking to, uh, to, um, to Fritz. But if you're talking to me, you can send me a DM if you're talking about ordering anything so I can know what you're talking about <laughs> when I'm not on the show. <laughs> so anyways, um, but, um, but again, um, most important, man, for these last few days of the month, uh, just want to make sure that everybody understands the importance of voting, uh, the, um, the importance of voting with knowledge, the impo importance of voting with a purpose, the importance of voting um, with, with good, um, like a, a nice subjectivity and, and, and an understanding of what you need what your community needs, what your family needs, um, and then what is provided in your community and why. It takes some studying. So, you know, if you haven't studied yet, you got a lot of crash course studying to do real quick um, before you go to the polls. But but you don't want to just vote for, you know, down the line of this or down the line of that. You want to vote with a purpose. You want to know and have confidence that whoever it is that you're voting for, there's a meaning and a purpose behind it and that you uh, and that you know that you're going to keep tabs on that purpose, uh, excuse me, on that person um, and that you are going to hold them accountable. And uh, and that is that is um, a, a very essential part of 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 the whole voting process. Um, again, if you see the census, if you haven't done it, if you threw that thing out, you better go on the dot gov. I think it's I think you could just uh, Google census and it'll come up and you better go and request another one and fill out the census. Um, I think there's even a way to do it online. You have to do that because that is how certain monies are relegated to your community, to your city, to your county, to your state. 
so on. And, and, and the money and all of those monies trickle down and trickle out and, uh, and things get funded properly like that. You know, we always wonder why our schools in, in, in black and brown communities or underserved served communities, why they suffer financially. Why don't we have better computers? Why don't we have more books in the libraries? Why don't we have better books in classes? Well, a lot of that has to do with the fact that certain monies don't get to our communities. Whereas the guys next door, a couple counties over, they might be, you know, rolling in some dough and and they're making sure that they're filling out their census. So they're making more money and spending less because they already got more money coming in so they can charge less taxes to the people and so on. So so it's just crazy. It's crazy how 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 some of this stuff works. And um, and so you got to get invested. You got to believe that there's a purpose to it all and that you should be a part of it or want to be a part of it. Uh, hi, Lisa in the pink. I see you there. Um, I'm trying to pay attention to two different screens at the same time because um, I'm recording uh, <laughs> on to Instagram from thing. Let me actually turn my, since, I, since my guest is gone, let me turn my Instagram around now, see if that'll work. Boom, there you go, Instagram. All right, so I had um, DJ Fritzo on earlier um, a minute ago, and now he is uh, he is back to um, to his life doing things that are awesome musically and creatively, movie wise, and he, he's doing all kinds of stuff. So it's really cool. Make sure you guys follow him. Um, he's at, at djfritzo.com and then at DJ Fritzo F R, F -R I T Z O um, on Instagram. And uh, and keep keep uh, keep a track of what he's doing, man. Uh, and again, if you're an artist or if you write, uh, you know, if you have movie ideas or or uh, reality show ideas or pilots or whatever like that, they'll look at your stuff, man. And uh, and if it's good, they'll tell you it's good. And if they can't do something with it, they'll lead you in a good direction. So um, just good people. Um, again, uh, you know, most importantly. Let's make sure we vote. We got about nine days, I think. And uh, I already voted. Um, I think I posted a million things about that. So please, you guys, get out there and vote. Every vote does count. Uh, every vote does count. So I have, to, uh, I have to say that it's very important for people to understand uh, every vote counts. Every vote counts. Um, Instagram shut down. I'm going to have to turn it off and then turn it back on in a minute. Um, but every vote counts, and it's so important that uh, that we um, – boom, here we go. We're going back live again. Um, so we're back live on uh, Instagram too. Uh, sorry about that, but they only give you an hour, and then you got to sign back in again. So, um, so, yeah, every vote counts. Um, if you think for some reason that your vote doesn't count, if you think for some reason that uh, that um, you know you're being bullied into not voting, just take somebody with you. Um, whatever you got to do, um, it, every vote counts. Every single vote counts. And like I said earlier, especially on the local level, that is where everything starts, and that's literally where it ends. Um, the, you know. Even though we see the other people in the house, uh, you know, putting pens to paper, um, putting judges in seats, some of that stuff sucks. You know, no, no black judges. Uh, Farat, thank you, brother. Uh, I'm not leaving yet. Um, um, we we do have to understand though that that the more we do on the local level, the more it creates change up the ladder. Um, especially if we hold these folks accountable, then uh, then um, then we can create change through that. We can create different things happening. Um, the more noise we make on the local level, the less noise we make on the lo local level, then uh, you know we can forget it. Uh, it. You know, it's it's not it's you know we, we can't do any good just vote, just worrying about who's the president. We have to worry about who are the councilmen who are the auditors, who are the sheriffs, who are the county council, who are the aldermen, who are the mayors, and who are the governors, um, the local judges that get voted on. We have to make sure those folks are the right folks. And when we do that, 
that makes noise in your community. And then that noise goes up the ladder and it makes people pay attention. Um, so it's very important. And again, very important that if you have not filled out the census, that you go somewhere online and get that done. That is, uh, that is very significant. It is not just about counting people. It is not just about wanting to identify you like DJ Fritzo said. It's not just about people wanting to know where you are and you want to hide from people. You know, it's, it's literally how local funds are distributed um, to schools, uh, to, uh, oops, to schools and to, uh, and to um, different, um, um, different other local uh, systems like um, hospital systems, um, build um, um, infrastructure. Uh, all these things are funded uh, part partially through tax monies and tax monies are, I, I, I don't know what the technical term is for that. So please forgive me, but there's monies that are divvied down from, from the federal government to local government, um, you know, state governments and then local governments. And those monies are given to where they see more need based on the numbers and based on the communities and the numbers. So if you have a community that has a thousand people and only five people fill out the census, your community is in trouble. Your, your, your hospital is in trouble. Your um, schools are in trouble and so much is in trouble. Hey, Steph, how are you? Um, good to see you. Um, yeah. So, so, so the census is, um, is a very essential part of, of this whole, uh, be, being involved in, in community. So we want to see, um, we want to see the funds and the proper, uh, support divvied out in the right ways. And we want to see certain communities not suffer. We know that the numbers are high, very high in some of these, uh, underserved communities, but because those census, uh, forms are not filled out, those families, whole families are not being accounted for. And that means those are dollars that are diverted somewhere else. So we got to make sure that we open our eyes and open our ears and open our minds to uh, to gathering the knowledge necessary to make sure that we're taking part in the process the proper way. Uh, so um, if you guys have any questions, if you have uh, any um, any things that you wanted to ask DJ Fritzo, but we weren't able to get around to it, please do me a favor and send me some messages. Um, also, you again, you can look him up at DJ Fritzo um, on Instagram. Um, that's at DJ F R I T Z O. Uh, you can also go to his website, djfritzo.com, um, and uh, and of course, you you know how to reach me at uh, OBI. E underscore SBT SBC, um, all lowercase um, on Instagram. And then uh, on Facebook, it could, you can either do the www.facebook.com forward slash uh, thing and then put OBI E SBT SBC capital letters. Um, uh, or you can look me up under OB Morant, O B I E M O R A N T. Uh, sorry, I can't stay, but so happy to see you and best wishes. Same to you, sweetheart. Uh, and I'm going to be in uh, your neck of the woods soon uh, in November uh, because of my sponsor. I'm doing some stuff in a couple places in Hollywood and and uh, with Gorin uh, Gorin Brothers uh, with the hats. Oh, by the way, my sponsor Gorin Brothers. I know I mentioned them earlier. Don't forget if you are into hats, uh, if you have a brother or dad or mom or a, a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife a friend, a coworker, or me, if you want to say, you know what, Obi, you're such a great guy. Let me buy you a hat. My size is medium. I know it looks like I got a big head, but nope, my size is medium. And uh, you can go on Goran right now. And if you check out with, um, you can check out with the, the, the uh, code word um, um, food for action 10. That's food for action in all capital letters. Uh, food for action 10. Um, and if you put that uh, in when you're checking out, then you get a nice little discount um, from our sponsor, our partner, Gorin 
uh, brothers. So it's freaking cool having them as a sponsor. And we have some other folks that we're um, talking to now to to hopefully um, that are going to come to the table as well so they can help us get uh, uh, reach more folks. And uh, and so it's pretty neat. Also, one before I go, I want to make sure uh, that I remind you, any of you guys who have businesses, um, if you have a small business, a big business, a home based business, um, if you have a business and you want to partner with Food for Action, um, um, I give a two week free um, scenario where I will mention your business. And if you send us product, uh, it, rather it's clothing, jewelry, um, or what, whatever you do, um, if you, if you do some, you know, something in, you know, for food for action, you send us some of your stuff, swag or whatever, then we will show your stuff online, uh, on our shows. We will post about you, um, in our regular posting that we do, as you see, because I've, I'm constantly posting stuff and we will mention you on our live shows for two weeks for free. After that, then we will sit down and we'll uh, talk about a small fee that'll be either monthly or quarterly. And that fee will do three things. One, it will help my battle with chronic Lyme disease and the um, and the uh, the monies needed to uh, assist in that whole scenario. And then uh, two, we give money to um, to different um positive organizations that are proven organizations that help fight racism, uh, injustice, social injustice, sy systemic racism, and the like. Um, and then three, we will obviously put more, uh, some funds into um, helping the show to grow. Um, we might need new software. We might need, um, um, I don't know, whatever comes up that we need, if the computer breaks or if uh, if I need new internet or, you know, just those kind of things. So every so th so everything is for a purpose. Um, so but also it gets your um, it gets your brand and your name out there. We're on twice a week, every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. And um, and of course, I will also um, grant your company or your brand uh, a representative an interview on the show. And you can talk about, you know, where your show came from, what it does, what's the purpose and so on. You can just big up your show. I mean, I big up your brand. So, again, if you have a small business or a big business or um, or a home based business and you'd like to partner up with Food for Action, please send me a DM and I will reach right back out to you. If you have any other questions about things that we spoke about or if you need some more information about DJ Fritzo, then please reach out to me, DM me as well. My number, I believe, is located in my uh, profile too. Um, I want to thank you guys for uh, for joining in today. <clears throat> I, I really appreciate you. I'm blessed um, to be able to continue doing this and reaching more and more people. We have topped 6,000 folks on Instagram. Um, we keep on running into 5,000 and then I have to go through and purge and we keep on topping 5,000 again on, on, uh, on, uh, Facebook. So I'm trying to find out from Facebook how I can go higher than 5,000. Um, I haven't gotten a response yet, but so, um, just, you know, stick with me folks and I'll figure all of that stuff out. Uh, again, I thank you so much for, uh, for, for joining the conversation today and every day that you join. Don't forget that you can watch these shows and share them with other folks later. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, San Influencer, oh, San Influencer. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, so thank you for, uh, thank you guys for for stopping by. Um, if, you, if you wanna reach out, please do so. Um, I'm always reachable. Um, and I hope to see you guys Wednesday when Kalu, uh, Kalu Music, uh, he's at Kalu Music on Instagram. Uh, he is the, he was a season winner of The Voice in the UK. Uh, he's going to be on our show on Wednesday. So that should be pretty awesome as well. And, uh, and uh, so I thank you guys. Um, Again, vote, 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 v
But let's get all those things done. Be a positive influence. Be a positive person. Love on folks. And uh, and together we will help to uh, to make a pathway to a United State in this country and all over the world. Um, thank you guys again. I will see you Wednesday. Same black time, same black channel.